Welcome to Energy Talks, a regular podcast series with expert discussions on topics related to power system testing, data management, and cybersecurity in the power industry. My name is Scott Williams from the podcast team at Omicron, and I will be your host. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our special Energy Talks mini-series called Cybersecurity and the Power Grid, in which we provide you with a 360-degree view of how power grids can best safeguard their infrastructures from cyber attacks. In our second episode of this mini-series, Omicron cybersecurity experts Ozan Dayang and Thomas Wolf describe the critical role that intrusion detection systems, or IDS, play in OT networks, as well as the importance of adopting holistic cybersecurity solutions for securing power networks. Based on their personal journeys and on-site findings, Ozan and Thomas highlight the challenges faced by power providers and offer practical recommendations that encompass not only software solutions, but also the range of specialized services Omicron has to offer to power providers for cybersecurity. Hello, Ozan. Hello, Thomas. Welcome to Energy Talks. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the invitation, Scott. Thank you again for joining me. Could you both introduce yourselves and share the experiences that led you to become application engineers at Omicron? What sparked your interest in power network security specifically, and how has it shaped your professional journey? Sure, I can start. Okay, thank you, Ozan. So, as you said, my name is Ozan Dayanj, and I joined Omicron in 2020 as a cybersecurity application engineer. My journey in electrical engineering began when I was in technical high school, and I continued in this field during my first years. After completing my bachelor's degree, I worked on a significant uh, project involving railway systems. Mm -hmm. In this role, I was responsible for tasks like configuring network switches, managing servers like DNS, Active Directory, and implementing cybersecurity measures to protect the system. It was during the project that I started understanding what cybersecurity involves and how it applies to various parts of the network. Once the railway IT project is concluded, my company assigned me to a new project commissioning a substation automation system. This was a return to my core field, basically, but now with a strong focus on security. The insights I gained from the IT project were course, invaluable in meeting the cybersecurity requirements of these new OT projects. I worked on commissioning IC 61850 and IC 6870-5-104 systems from SCADA to Relay and also took care of configuring network switches and implementing security measures. After spending another two years in this field, primarily in Egypt, with occasional work in Germany, I made the decision. I want to combine my knowledge in both IT and OT, learning new things while, of course, contributing my experience. And this desire led me to Omicron, where I am today. Oh, very good. Thank you, Ozan. Thomas, what about you? Yeah, thank you, Scott. Yeah, my name is Thomas Wolf. I'm since more than two and a half years here in Omicron. And as a sales and application specialist, I am responsible for the cybersecurity solution Station Guard. Before I joined Omicron, I worked almost 15 years as an engineer for substation automation systems in different companies. I started 2005 in Areva and over several steps, I worked for companies like Schneider Electric, Alstom, NGE, and I worked there in different projects and I was responsible as a technical project leader for the engineering and commissioning of substation automation systems. And so with this background, I can say that I know the requirements for substation automation systems from both sides. So from the operational side, from the engineering side, and also from the cybersecurity perspective. And that's also my motivation to bring all this knowledge in our product and also in the cybersecurity projects. Very good. Thomas, thank you for that. Okay. So could you both walk us through a typical workday as an application engineer with the need for frequent travel? What are the primary objectives you aim to achieve while on site? 
I think I can start again. My work days come in two variations. Those I spend in the office and those I'm on site with the customer. And when I'm in the office, I start by reviewing the mails to see if any customer requires support from our team. I also maintain a close collaboration with our development team and participate in their daily meetings to stay updated on the progress of our product. And this approach allows me to develop a deeper understanding of the product, by the way, and also provide them a valuable user feedback that can influence the future development. Mm -hmm. Another aspect of my role is conducting security assessments for our customer. Our work primarily involves network in control centers, substations, and power plants for energy suppliers. Based on customer requests, we have installed an intrusion detection system called Station Guard into their network, and we perform security assessments from time to time. And this involves analyzing peak apps, evaluating network setups, assessing system hardening, reviewing the segmentation, authentication, identifying vulnerabilities, and creating an asset inventory. And from this analysis, we create a comprehensive report summarizing the security status of the network, which we then present to the customers. This analysis is conducted in collaboration with our cybersecurity analysts. So this is more or less what I do in the office. And when I'm on site with a customer, which could be a substation, control center, or power station, my tasks typically include configuring our IDS system and integrating it into their network and providing trainings to the users. It requires network admins who are familiar with the network to verify the configuration, as IDS systems do not operate effectively without a proper configuration. Additionally, it relies heavily on the network equipments like switches, which must be configured correctly, as IDS systems depends on span ports or known as mirror ports. An additional challenge is that we cannot make changes on the customer site. These are highly restrictive environments. Therefore, ensuring the presence of the responsible network engineer like a system admin who can assist with switch configurations is essential before on-site visit. And these are just a few challenges we we encounter. Uh, but being on site generally is enjoyable, uh, especially given my previous job, which also involved frequent on site. Thank you, Ozan. Thomas, could you walk us through your typical workday and what are your primary objectives when you are on site at customer locations? I couldn't describe the workday any better than Ozan because we have more or less the same, the same tasks to do on site and also in the office. And what I can say is that. Almost every week or every day, it's different because we are working with different customers in different projects and every customer and every project are also a challenge for us. And we not only want to convince the customer from our cybersecurity solution, but we also want to claim to install and configure the system as quickly as possible with the best result for the customer. And all these little cha uh, challenges in the projects gives us the opportunity to learn and to expand our knowledge of substation automation systems and cybersecurity. But at the end of the day, the main goal for us is to have our IDS system working well or working successfully in the network customer side. Thomas, thank you for that. So both of you, when customers approach you, or when you proactively reach out to customers, what are the key motivations behind these interactions? Are regulatory compliance and system malfunctions the primary drivers, or are there other factors involved? Yeah, in general, the main motivation should be to looking after a solution for an IDS and to implement such a system in the network infrastructure to protect and to observe the network in order to ensure the safe operation of this of the system of the network and but for sure for the german market the regulatory compliance is now certainly the main motivation for customer approach us for for the cyber security solution or intuition detection system station guard because according to the german law the it security law 2.0 or in german the it sicherheitsgesetz which came into force on may 1st 2023, 
This law requires that every provider of critical infrastructure, such as substation, automation system, control center, or power plants, must install an intrusion detection system in a network. Especially since the legislator has to specify the responsibility on management side and increase also the possibility penalties if the provider doesn't not implement it such a or implement the required measures. Therefore, some customer already under pressure to start to evaluate ATING's IDS systems and implementing such a system in a network. And in the German-speaking countries like Switzerland and Austria, where the energy transmission provider has also connections to the to the German energy grid, the customers are starting the evaluation process to looking for IDS solution and also to implement such systems in the power plants to be compliant also with the, with the German law. And yeah, we have also already installed our IDS solution in some substations at customers in Switzerland and Austria as well. Thank you, Thomas. Ozan, what key motivations or factors are you experienced when interacting with customers? I think Thomas had a really good point there. The regulations and the law are the main drivers for our customer. But I would like to point a different perspective when it comes to the customer interactions. So we are basically specializing in intrusion detection systems and IDS is more than just an intrusion detection system. It offers a wide array of benefits, including vulnerability management, asset inventory, the ability to detect functional problems and auditing connections. I'm remembering my days on working on the OT networks during commission. Having a tool like Station Guard would have significantly eased the process of me commissioning the substation. And this is because we can identify various functional problems that OT engineers can leverage uh, for troubleshooting. When I mean we, actually I mean the station guard. And we come across persistent network problems in OT. And with IDS in place, we can investigate issues that date back months and identify the root cases, enabling network admins to resolve them. These issues can reveal communication problems, connection issues, failed retried attempts, unauthorized access, and things like that. Detecting these problems saves definitely a lot of time, and time means money, you know. It's important to note that IDS systems aren't meant exclusively for IT professionals. They should be accessible to OT personnel as well. So many of the issues I mentioned earlier are mostly related to OT. To engage OT in the realm of cybersecurity, the solutions should speak their language. Unfortunately, this isn't always the case in the market. We can see already some market leaders with their solution, which doesn't really align with the needs of the OT professionals who have a range of responsibilities. Yeah. In our case, we have tailored an idea system that gathers both IoT and IT departments together. And traditionally, IDS was mainly used in IT, as, ma as mentioned before. So typically, IDS should provide mo fundamental monitoring and intrusion detection capabilities. Our IDS comes with unique features that bridge the gaps between the IT and OT. When securing and monitoring an OT network, you always need uh, OT expertise uh, or individuals like OT engineers, technicians who can provide the knowledge to you. And simultaneously, you require IT professionals with extensive cybersecurity experience. And these are more or less the motivation that drives my work. Many individuals commission, maintain and operate OT networks and I aim to raise awareness of how an IDS can be a valuable tool in their daily tasks extending beyond cybersecurity. I want to demonstrate how cybersecurity solutions can be simplified and uh, yeah, achieving this goal necessitates the solutions designed around these principles, basically. So these are the reasons behind, the, behind customer motivations when they are uh, approaching us beyond the regulations and laws. Very good, Ozan. Thank you. Okay, so drawing from your on-site experiences, what are some noteworthy findings and challenges you have encountered with power networks? Could you share any personal learnings from these experiences? 
Yes, for sure. In general, we can say the bigger and complex the network is, the problems get bigger too. But also the older the network, that the more problems we see. And the most of the, or if we start with the installation, we are also starting analyzing the documentation of the projects, but some findings can be identified already beforehand of the installation or what we call the, the proof of concept. And so when we prepare the installation, for example, we are also checking the documents of the system and then we can, for example, we can identify some lacks of information or bugs in the documentation and we identify sometimes that they are missing SCD files or the SCD file for the IEC 61850 substation is not well formed or we have not updated IP address lists or the, for example, the, the system diagram doesn't match with the, with the installed system. They are missing or wrong communication lines or poor documentation of IDs, especially the communication. And for example, when the customer wants to define the mirror port at a, at a switch for the IDS system, sometimes you realize that there is no ethernet port available because all the, the ports are already in use. And this comes from the disadvantage of the lack of information inside the, the documents. And for us, it's a very important point when we start with the configuration and the installation of the system, that we have all the documents and all the updated documents ready. And then during the installation and commissioning of the IDS, yeah, we have so the typical findings as example. That we have unknown IDs, we see unknown uh, network adapters, sometimes the configuration, especially for IC6150 substation, doesn't match with the, with the configuration files inside the device. Or for example, for the IC104 SCADA communication, we see unknown data types or uh, how to say useless or unused operations or set point operations. And at the end, sometimes we see also the unused protocols in the network, like NetBIOS or license application manager running there. And however, most of these problems could have been solved uh, or identified uh, during the commissioning phase of the systems, because this is also much more difficult for the customer to fix them. This is because it is much more difficult for the customer to fix these detected issues afterwards or making changes in the device settings or systems that is still in operation. And for example, in older substation, you have devices where the firmware is running out of lifetime and the customer is not able to update these devices. Or if they wanted to update these devices, then they have to update all the devices in the substation, which is also time consuming and costly. And therefore we also for our support for the engineering commissioning phase of a, a substation automation system. And we can provide also the service during the commissioning and also the service for troubleshooting during the commissioning. And sometimes customers said, if we had done the IDS installation or the POC during the commissioning phase of the substation in the past. We would have much less uh, problems with the system during the operational period. Yeah, I, I agree with Thomas. I think he already touched the main points again, and I think these are more or less also my experiences. Just, I would like to make a short addition to the complexity or when it gets more complex or problematic. Yeah. So for me, when the network is many years old, it gets more complicated. In OT, you can find networks which are 20 years old or like 10 years old and nobody mm -hmm. touched the system for a very long time. For example, lack of documentation as well is something we always come across within these old networks. IP lists are either missing, network diagrams are not up to date and many other examples like this. Another problem is related to the system knowledge. System engineers who commissioned years uh, old networks are not there anymore. They're most probably retired or somewhere else. And the knowledge about the communication background, device role, network design is missing. And these are crucial information when you're configuring an IDS in the network. You can find, for example, tons of RSTP problems with longer recalculation times in these kind of networks. 
because there were no maintenance or no improvements, no troubleshooting that has been done. OT networks can be many years old and again, no interaction within this time frame. It's way different than the IT. So in terms of power network standards, how do German speaking countries differ from other countries in Europe? Are there notable variations such as contrasting approaches to the protocols they're using or stricter government regulations that power providers should be aware of? Thomas, can I ask you to start? Yeah, for sure. Thanks. The transmission and distribution grid provider in Germany speaking countries have, yeah, that is a, a huge installed base and also with a, over a long history and over the decades in the past, they established all the different types of substation automation systems with a different philosophy of signal exchange, so to say, and for example, hardwired signal exchange from the beginning and over the serial communication, which started in the eighties with the communication from protection device over the serial protocol IC-103 and now the ethernet based communication, mostly IC-6850 and all these different types of philosophies creates a huge base and a lot of substations in the German speaking countries are using still the serial communication, like the 103 for the protection device and the SCADA communication IC-101 and for some customers, the transformation process towards the Ethernet based communication to IEC 6150 is still going on. And especially the transmission grid providers has also a high level standardization through all of the components of the substation, like protection IDs and cubicles, the wiring, communication, for example, like the serial, what I mentioned before, and all the signal range and also protection schemes or on a very high level standard. And this makes this high level of standards in combination with this long history of this installed base, it makes it so difficult for some customers to change communication philosophy from this area to the Ethernet based so quickly. And that's the reason why the transformation and the refurbishment takes so long than in other countries. And there's also the evaluation of an IDS system. Very good. Thank you, Thomas. Ozan. Mm -hmm. uh, I can provide insights into this topic under the two titles. The one is the standards, the regulatory standards, and the other is the uh, protocol standards. Especially I will point to business activities across the various EU, EU and non-EU countries. As Thomas said, in Germany, there are notable regulatory developments that power providers should be aware of as the for, for example, the IT 2.0 have been introduced, impacting the critical infrastructures. In addition to that, EU wide, there was a new NIST directive, NIST 2, is set to enforce cybersecurity regulations across the European Union, with a particular focus also on this critical infrastructure. It will be regulated by every EU member state at latest at October 17, 2024. I'm pretty sure that these regulations will increase investments for cybersecurity. Furthermore, there are internationally recognized industrial control system security standards, such as IC 602443, which encompass a wide range of cybersecurity aspects, including technical measures and security requirements for suppliers and many, many others. These standards play a crucial role uh, in ensuring the security of these critical infrastructures. Going back to the second title, which was related to protocol standards within OT networks, I think IC61850 standard stands out, especially at the substation level. It is considered one of the most advanced protocols in power grid networks at the moment and is widely adopted by utilities worldwide due to its numerous advantages. And communication between control center and the substations, you may see still serial protocols like IEC 101, or also it's TCP IP version one, IC 104. On the other hand, countries like UK, US, Australia, Canada often rely on the NP3 protocol for control center communication. 
when you compare with the rest of the countries. In summary, while there are variations in regulations, standards and protocols from region to region, the fundamental principle of operating and protecting a power grid remains the same. It is essential for power providers to stay informed about these variations to ensure the compliance and effective operation with each specific regions. Yeah. That would be my answer. Thank you, Ozan. So considering the significance of cybersecurity solutions, what recommendations would you give power providers to enhance the security of their OT networks? Ozan, could you start with this, please? Yeah, sure. I would like to point some organizational solutions instead of technical solutions or pointing the technical problems. One of the main problems we observe is the shortage of skilled staff and resources in the field of OT security. Within OT teams, there's often hesitation to take on additional responsibilities because team members are already overloaded. I think Thomas will agree on this matter. This situation is understandable, but it does also highlight the needs for dedicated cybersecurity roles. This is a common challenge in many places. Secondly, they don't have skilled staff because nobody convinced the board with a clear cybersecurity strategy and recruited new employees. This is also another main problem. Additionally, there is often a significant gap between IT and OT departments. These two departments and their staff members may not be aware of each other's activities. Sometimes IT might want to include OT networks into their cybersecurity program without informing the OT, and vice versa, the OT might initiate security project without getting input from the IT department. But what should happen is both departments and their team members should leverage each other's expertise. But what should happen, both departments and their team members should leverage each other's expertise, where the primary goal is safeguarding OT networks. Collaboration and sharing of knowledge, crucial for success in this regard. Ozan, thank you. Tell us what recommendations do you have for power providers to enhance the security of their OT networks? Yeah, I can fully agree with Ozan, what he said, and yeah, about the gap between the IT and OT, this is also for us one of the challenge that we should bring all these guys together and also doing the installation and also doing the work stuff inside the substation. We have to work with them. And as Ozan mentioned, that there are sometimes gaps between the knowledge of IT and OT. And there also this is our part to bring them together. Ostan and Thomas, referring to the previous questions and your answers, the gap between IT and OT is not a secret. OT has started to apply cybersecurity practices, but according to your answers, there still seems to be a conflict regarding cybersecurity responsibilities in OT. If this is the case, who should take care of cybersecurity in the OT part of organizations? As I mentioned earlier, addressing the cybersecurity gap in OT requires allocating the necessary resources and establishing a dedicated OT security team, including both IT and OT professionals. For example, a cybersecurity officer collaborating closely with SCADA or protection engineers. This would be the dream team. Uh, and the primary focus would be safeguarding the OT domain and serving as a bridge between these two departments. And I witnessed successful implementations of these in various organizations, especially in the power grids. It is crucial to understand that the burden of cybersecurity should not fall on either the OT or IT individuals. Effective cybersecurity is a collaborative effort requiring the expertise of both groups to create this defense strategy. Okay, and Thomas? Yeah, maybe I can say in the same way that the protection engineers and the SCADA engineers has differentiated themselves in the past. We often see this separation between OT and IT engineers. And for example, in the past, the protection engineer was only focused on the idea of protection function settings inside the device. And he was responsible mostly until end of the ID 
which typically ends with inputs and outputs. And also the SCADA engineer was only interested in the communication between protocols, base signals, exchange between components such as IEDs, RTUs and HMIs. But as the Ethernet-based communication became the standard for substation automation systems and the SCADA systems, especially with IEC 61850 and uh, 1104 protocol, you could see the protection engineers and the SCADA engineers works really closer together than in than before. And this is the same for the OT and IT engineers when it comes to cybersecurity, because there are also a lot of overlapping issues about communication, time synchronization, and also the criticality of communication and signals in the system. And each other needs to understand what is going on in the other part of the system. So for example, the IT people should know what is the criticality behind a missing goo signal. It's not only a protocol. It's not only that like the, the web browser is not, cannot be reached and he has to understand that a missing goo signal could be really, really risky, risky situation in the, in the substation because, for example, the CP trip signal is not coming. And also the OT guy should know the criticality of using insecure communication or insecure protocols like Telnet or the HTTP inside the substation. And in general, we can say in terms of cybersecurity, they should cybersecurity, they should not be limits or boundaries between the OT and IT because the system or the cybersecurity approach works only perfectly when all these guys working close together. Okay. Thank you very much. So looking ahead, what developments do you anticipate for the future of power network security? Are there any emerging challenges or opportunities that power providers should be prepared for? And Osen, what is your opinion? Uh, I anticipate that in the future, there will be a greater convergence of IT technologies, products and protocols into the OT networks. Uh, this trend is already visible in advanced sub substation automation systems networks, where you can find Active Directory servers, virtualized appliances, IDS implementations, firewalls, database servers, asset management tools, data aggregators, and more. One area of development is the growing importance of the of IDS in monitoring and securing yep. the OT networks. IDS not only helps in detecting intrusions, but also offers several other advantages, such as for asset inventory management, vulnerability management, malfunction identification, and functional monitoring, which can be particularly valuable for OT professionals. All these trends indicate an ongoing evolution of OT networks towards digitalization, a trend that is visible in new or refurbished substations automation systems across various countries. And Omicron closely monitor these market changes and actively contribute to this transition by providing solutions and services. Our solution offers visibility into the net OT networks assisting the asset inventory management, vulnerability management, and intrusion detection. Additionally, our engineering service team supports ut utilities during the initial phase of substation automation system projects, helping with tasks, tasks such as specifying requirements, selecting appropriate technologies, and designing secure by design networks, among mm -hmm. the other aspects. Our strategy aims to ensure that power grids are well prepared to tackle the challenges and seize the opportunities in evolving landscape of the power network security. Very good. Okay. Thomas, what is your opinion? Yeah. In general, we can say for a new substation or for the refurbishment of existing substation or systems, the cyber security is a now an integral part of the project. As early as in the planning and design phase, that's a dedicated team with mostly IT and OT guys, which was also our, our direct contact person in the, in the project. This team is involved to define the cybersecurity requirements for the whole systems. 
And these requirements will be also defined afterwards in the technical specification of the tender documents. And these experts now have also more the focus, focus on optimizing and simplifying network architectures in terms of cybersecurity aspects, such as network segmentation, VLANs, firewalls, the redundancy concept, and so on. And also as an important part, how to implement the EDS easily or efficiently into the system. For the operational aspect to ensure the availability of the whole system is also a really important aspect, which has to be on focus during the yeah, design and the configuration phase. And if you're looking into the future, especially in projects for, for example, full digital substations with IEC 650 process bus, where you use merchant units and sampled value, and the whole communication is based on the Ethernet, the functional aspects of availability, complexity, and efficiency together with the cybersecurity requirements, it's a much bigger challenge than before. But here too, we have all the experts here in Omicron where we can provide the service and support for the customer or in this area. Very good. How are Omicron solutions for OT cybersecurity different than other companies who are in the monitoring business? Sure. From the very beginning, we were addressing the gap between IT and OT domains. And at Omicron, we have expertise in both areas and we have merged this knowledge to create our IDS solution, Station Guard. What sets Station Guard apart is its appeal to both IT and OT users, thanks to our expertise in both domains. In addition, uh, it offers unique advantages for OT professionals with built-in OT knowledge. Since it has the built-in OT knowledge, it also prevents false positive alarms, which is a huge problem in the IDS world. Mm -hmm. I think Thomas will mention the details uh, after me. However, it's important to note that our commitment extends beyond providing solutions. We offer after-sales services that involves analyzing alarms and events generated by Station Guard. Um, don't get me wrong, we are not a security operations center provider. We only assist our customers in evaluating their events. And having a team with both IT and OT knowledge is crucial for precise data analysis and understanding outcomes. Effective communication is the key and being able to speak the technical language of our customer adds values into our feedback process. And our team's combination of IT and OT expertise strengthens uh, our ability, ability to assist our customers uh, while they're evaluating uh, their uh, events. In summary, our solution is tailor-made for OT networks, giving us a unique advantage when it comes to monitoring OT networks effectively. We combine our IT and OT expertise to provide comprehensive and specialized solutions for the specific challenges in your TN market. Thank you, Ozan. Thomas, do you have anything to add? Yes, sure. Yeah, here in Omicron, we have uh, a huge experience and uh, a huge knowledge about communication and the functional process inside substations, control centers, and power plants. And this was also the base to develop such an IDS system with power utility called Station Guard. And that's why we are say that our IDS system Station Guard is tailor-made for using in a typical communication environment such as those found in substations, control centers, and power plants. And so from the IDS perspective, we can say that we're coming from the other side instead of our competitors. They are mostly coming from the IT side. So the main differences from our system to compare to the competitors are, are that we have the possibility to reduce the install time of an IDS to a minimum. So in general, it takes several minutes up to a few hours. And this means we can also provide the, the quick solution. We can provide a quick solution as well as in new systems, as in systems which are already in operation. And also the installation and the configuration of an IDS can completely done by the customer itself. So they can reach us for the support or they can contact us for the support. But 
if they have some changes inside the substation, they can also make all the changes inside the IDS by themselves. So they do not need strictly our support on site. Ozan and Thomas, before we finish, may I ask you for any concluding points you may have about why OT networks need an IDS? Yeah, thank you, Scott. Yes, cybersecurity is not only a product. Cybersecurity could be seen as a philosophy in the project. And cybersecurity is also like a journey which will never end through the whole lifetime of the project. And we in Omicron, we want to accompany the customers on this way. Very good. Osan. Uh, yeah, as Thomas said, cybersecurity is an endless adventure that repeats again and again. Monitoring with IDS brings numerous advantages for cybersecurity and also function monitoring. More importantly, using IDS with built-in OT knowledge will bring unique advantages, not just for IT, but also for the OT people. And Omicron Electronics is the right address to meet with these solutions. Ozan and Thomas, thank you both for joining me for this second episode in our Energy Talks mini-series about cybersecurity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And a big thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of Energy Talks. We always welcome your questions and feedback. Simply send us an email to podcast at omicronenergy.com. Omicron has several years of experience in power system testing, data management, and cybersecurity in the power industry, and offers you the matching solution for your application. For more information, be sure to visit our website at omicronenergy.com. Please join us to listen to the next episode of Energy Talks. Goodbye for now, everyone. Mm-hmm.